mustache. So here's the, so, so Dave Mellon, you know, it's um, this is like high maintenance type stuff. So we gotta like roll out the red carpet. Well, I started being on time. Oh, well, so, I was I was kind of on time almost. So listen, let's talk about this, right? Because we got a lot of other real more important people that we want to bring in. So we gotta get chat here quick. Yeah. But all right, no, I'm kidding. Dave's become a dear friend, like many that have sat down with us. You know why we get to do this? Because we have developed friendships yeah. along the way. And you're one of those guys. You traveled with us to South Carolina for a trip. Absolutely, that was fun. That was fun. That was there was lots and lots of fun. Yeah. So we used to do not you. We did, and we're rolling them back out. We used to do on taps where we would rent out a bar and bring guys in to do a speak. You know, speak and teach and and rent the place out and throw a brotherhood bash, if you will. Um, you joined us for a South Carolina trip that Rob and I put together uh, and so on. We had a lot of fun, but talk to me about what you do, where you are, why you're here, and why you have this mustache. Yeah, so the mustache is an easy one uh, because my wife absolutely hates it. We love you, Kate. <laughs> Everybody loves you, honey. <laughs> but, uh, no, so I actually uh, did not know that I could grow a mustache, and so uh, it was about two years ago I decided that I was just going to give it a shot, and it just kept getting better and better with time. It's like a fine wine. Uh, and so it, it got this life of its own. Uh, and then when I did finally shave it off, uh, I felt like I kind of lost my identity, right? And so uh, a lot of people that you know, either follow me on social media or, or friends of mine, they're like, hey, man, you got to grow this thing back. Right. And so uh, it's, it's here to stay. I mean, she's, she's going to get over it eventually. But uh, no, so I live in Kansas City, and uh, I, I own Valor Fire Training, a uh, career fireman in the suburb of KC, and then I volunteer as well. And uh, I go around the country and I teach stuff that I'm passionate about. What are you passionate about? So, <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm passionate about uh, medical uh, response to the Mayday, right? So, when we sit there and we talk about, you know, firefighters getting hurt. For me, when I learned how to do survival and Mayday stuff, uh, we, we bring the victim out, we drop him at the door, we give high fives, and, and we reset and do the next, you know, the next scenario. For me, uh, when I've had firefighters actually get hurt, Nobody really knows what the next thing to do is. Right. Because right? we don't practice that. So we came up with the class, Medical Response to Mayday. Uh, we go around, we do it. Uh, and it's everything that happens after you bring them out. So whether it's diabetic emergency, trauma, stroke, heart attack. Firefighter CPR. Yeah, firefighter CPR. It's so awesome to see that that is becoming a standard curriculum for Mainstream. departments, right? Mainstream, right? Which those guys that came up with it, amazing guys. Reached out to them, said, hey, I want to be able to incorporate that into my classes. Uh, and they helped me, you know, they gave me all the information and, and, and they're, they're awesome to work with. Uh, so, but yeah, so we do that, we do some leadership stuff and uh, it's kind of overall anything that we uh, are passionate about. All of our instructors can pick their own classes. I love it. Well, you know, go ahead, Rob. And I think of the one thing that we were initially attracted to by, not your mustache, but the lost art of realistic fire training because you did that one conference where I saw you on YouTube and you talked about how we are failing our new members not providing a realistic training environment absolutely because we're going to teach them to take an elkhart brass nozzle and open it up and then close it down because we can't put the fire out sure and i thought that was just pivotal and that we we're going to start looking into that as a fire service so and, and and here's how i know that my job is never going to be done with that right like with the with the realism in training i just went to a live burn for a, a educational institution a few months ago and the department that was hosting it still would not let us flow real nozzles with real pressure. They gave us a half inch tip and said, don't flow it over 40 PSI <laughs> because we don't want to break any of the tiles. Right. We don't right. want to hurt the building. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, you had these students going in there with like two fingers, spraying the nozzle everywhere, right? Thinking that that's how it is because that's all they know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we still have a lot of room to work, but uh, that's one of the things that you ha you guys have also been passionate about. Listen, so. the, the passion is just talking about how good the job is. Yeah. Right? I, I think too often we get in our own heads and then we get uh, we, we fall into a place where we don't talk enough about how great this actually is. Like, I'm here because I enjoy it. Like, I was just talking about it before. I met these couple guys over here that are around the corner. We've had a blast. I met these, we met him last year. We did some stuff this year together. He's, he's going to come up in a minute. But uh, we just, good conversation. It's fun. Like, we're brothers. We're, we're family. Yeah. Like, we're supposed to enjoy this, right? That's the way it should be. And I know for you, you're a big personality. And I know you get around. I don't mean that That's in a weird way. <laughs> hey, I mean my, that in wife a way. Is, my wife is watching All this. right. Well, I'm sorry. It's all right, but what, Kate, I, you know. what I'm getting at is, is that I know you like to take pictures everywhere you go with yes. people that you see. Yes. 
And, you know, I can say the last few nights, man, I wish I did too because there were so many great people that I've had conversations with to document the trip, the journey, and everything else. But memories are important. I know you like to do that. Talk to me about why. So, I, you know, I, a lot of it is I, I grew up in an era where we took pictures of everything, right? And so, uh, for me, like, the first uh, group of firefighters that I worked with, one of the guys uh, always carried a disposable camera in his bunker pocket. I said, why do you carry that? Like, are you take pictures at the fire? He goes, no, it's just for us. Like, what do you mean for us? He goes, when I come back out with my crew, I take a picture of us yeah. together, you right. know? And so uh, a lot of departments don't have that culture. You know, they don't catch, they don't catch pictures after jobs. Uh, and so it's, it's super important to me uh, for a couple reasons. One, because when I get older, I want to be able to see what I did, you know, and be able to look back on it. The other thing is, uh, you know, and I'll talk about Avery real quick. We had a, a firefighter on my department. She was tragically killed in a vehicle accident. Uh, I actually pumped her first fire that she was on two weeks before she died. And when we got back to the station, we were going to take a group photo, and we ended up catching another run. So we almost didn't. And I said, no, everybody stop. Before you go to the bathroom, grab your water, coffee, whatever. Get back over here. We all stood behind the rig and took a picture. And uh, two weeks later, she died. That's the only picture that we have of her, yeah. right? But that's the thing is like, you've got to take pictures because you don't know who's going to move away, who's going to do what, the memories, who's going to die. Absolutely. Good. Dave, thank you, man. We're, uh, we're, we're trudging along here, so I wish we had more time. But good, So where can people find you? Valor Fire Training. Tell them where they can find you. They want to reach out. What you got going on next? What's next? Yeah, so uh, we're actually going to go do another Hot Wings episode. So, Are you? Uh, yeah, we're going to do the hot seat. So. I, did it, I did it last year. Woo, it's going to be hot. Yep. It's going to be hot. Good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Valor Fire Training on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we have the Valor Fire Training podcast on all the major platforms, so look us up. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I appreciate you jumping yeah. in. Good. Let's grab the